there became something called the White Hope Era. Plowboys, gandy dancers, ranchers, any one of the right complexion who was 175 pounds or over was thought to be a challenger. And they came out of the woodwork, out of the circus tents, out of everywhere. And they were terrible. Heavyweight champion of the world had to be a white man. It meant, in essence, that blacks were non-beings, non-entities. They did not count in this. In 1908, Jack Johnson beats Tommy Burns to become the first black heavyweight champion of the world. Just as the knockout occurred, the local police stepped in to stop the film. When Jack Johnson won his fights, riots erupted, homes were burned, people were hurt, and lives were lost. The film of the KO was banned across America. Jack Johnson was a man a century ahead of his time. He was rocking a gold grill before Lil John, married three white women, in a time when a thousand black men a year lost their lives for the color of their skin. He held the heavyweight championship for seven years. As the white establishment tried to find any big man with a punch to unseat him, Jack talked and taunted, verbally sparred with fans who constantly used racial slurs and profound threats, but Jack just smiled while handily beating every white contender. This was the era of great white hopes. The racial marketing sold tickets, generated profits. Where there is profit to be made, well, somebody was going to make it. 66 years later, the same racial fires were stoked once again to sell fights. When Larry Holmes met Jerry Cooney in 1980, this unfortunate cycle of history had come to repeat itself. Larry Holmes was from the projects of Easton, Pennsylvania. He grew up tough, fighting on the streets and in the gym. Larry Holmes became a young standout sparring partner to the greats. He quickly turned pro after finding he could hang with the best of his era. His time spent in the ring with Muhammad Ali proved most instructive of all. Larry Holmes is the most underestimated heavyweight champion of them all. There came time to step out of Ali's shadow as a sparring partner. It was one of the saddest spectacles in boxing history. And Ali is learning that even he cannot be forever young. Look at the body in the head of Ali. Ali taking a tremendous punishment here. Angelo Dundee wants to stop the fight. Stop the fight. Stop the fight. <laughs> That's it. They stopped the fight at TKO. Even Larry Holmes cried. Ali's legion of fans could never forgive Holmes for the beating Larry had to give him even when he rose to the occasion in a 15-round classic with Ali's rival, Ken Norton. The fans still disliked Holmes for his blunt demeanor and never really forgave him for his thrashing of Ali. Larry just kept winning out of spite. As Larry Holmes is acknowledged and recognized and rightly so as the best heavyweight in the world. I proved myself out. I'm tired of proving it. The great white hope was a six foot six inch Irish kid from Manhattan named Jerry Cooney. Cooney was a left handed power puncher who fought from an orthodox stance. This made his left hook, thrown to the head or body, absolutely deadly. Jerry is more than a white fighter, okay? He's the best heavyweight in the world. 
I've watched Larry Holmes weave all these other fellas. They fight 15 rounds. They come out and they look like they, they can go to the prom. When you get in there with Cooney, you get hit and you get hurt. He smashed his way through the ranks, getting his title shot off the back of two brutal destructions over Ron Lyle. One of the most cringe inducing stoppages ever against Ken Norton. And scores it again. The legs of Morton wobble. Morton is hurt in his own corner. Cooney trying to measure him. Misses two uppercuts, but scores with combinations of left stands. Morton straight up. Morton is about to drop. Morton is on his knees and finally slumps in the corner. He is not going to get up from this. The fight is over. The promotion for the fight was centered almost entirely around the racial angle. You've heard us continually throughout the evening refer to Jerry as the Great White Hope. Well, personally, I take, I take exception to the tag, Great White Hope. It's a stereotype. Jerry is nobody's hope but his own. Don King was all too happy to pile on. Larry Holmes is the greatest heavyweight in the world today. We beg, literally beg, to fight Cooney, and we're still willing and ready and able to fight Cooney. Not to mention Cooney's managers, who gave one facepalm-worthy press conference after another. It's an insult when people say, well, he's a white hope or a good white fighter. He's not a good white fighter. He's a great heavyweight fighter. He ended Jerry's career. He never goes more than two rounds. Thank the Lord, and we'll be very happy. It'll prove that he's the greatest fighter of all time. Let the, man, let the cynics ask the same questions when he's heavyweight champion of the world, because that's his destiny, the championship of the world. Larry Holmes started getting death threats. The racial tension was purposely brought to a boil to sell a fight. Larry getting ready to come out. And Larry blowing a kiss to all of you who are watching. But inside, you got to know that he has a normal human being's normal doubts and maybe even fears. And the same, of course, is totally true of Jerry Coon. The night of the fight, with a crowd of nearly 30,000 being watched over by police snipers. A phone line had been installed in Jerry Cooney's dressing room at the request of Ronald Reagan. He wanted to be able to congratulate Cooney on a win. This was not a request he made for the locker room of the reigning champion. As if that disrespect wasn't enough, when they were introduced, a serious bit of boxing protocol was broken. It is tradition that the reigning champion be introduced last into the ring. This was the only time in the modern history of the sport a champion was introduced first. ABC, heavyweight champion of the world, the Eastern assassin, Larry Holmes. All that trivial ceremony didn't matter to Larry. When the bell rings, Larry is as silky smooth a heavyweight as ever lived. His jab might be the single most dominant punch in all of boxing history. Larry had a jab that caused knockdowns, caused cuts and bruises. It caused the world to blur and the painful confusion that leaves openings. Jerry was taller with a longer reach and was jabbing with his power hand Larry still out-jabbed him early. By round two, he sends his jab down to the body, drawing Cooney's defense out of place and disguising the footwork that closed the distance to drop Cooney on a right hand upstairs. A good blow by Holmes, a good right, and it's called a knockdown. Jerry got up on steady legs and got to work. He spammed his left hook like a button masher. Around the Holmes, how Holmes fights the fight, continues successfully to execute. But I have never seen the downside of having the power hand forward means Cooney's right hand is totally underdeveloped in comparison. Holmes wasn't concerned about Cooney's right, so he could focus completely on shutting down Jerry's mean left hook. As the rounds wore on, Larry Holmes' fights had a way of turning into wars. He was only silky smooth for so long. Once his feet couldn't explode off to an angle anymore, that was the true secret to him. Larry Holmes, the boxer, was technically smooth. Larry Holmes, the man, 
was grittier than concrete. Andy Dundee used to call Jerry a one-off bandit, saying he could only fight with the left. Morning. Jerry landed some damaging left hooks, fought bravely with all that he had. At the end of round six, Larry rocks Jerry with another one-two, knocking his mouthpiece out. Jerry endured the onslaught, found his bearings, and with no mouthpiece to bite, returns fire with a triple left hook of his own. The fight was wild. Both men landed big, Jerry to the body, Larry upstairs. Just like that, it's gone. The ugly racial promotion gets left aside. It's just a champion and a challenger. And who wants it more? Two men with the same goal, nothing more and nothing less. Down the stretch, it was Larry Holmes that elevated himself, even after taking arguably the worst low blow in heavyweight history. Larry Holmes was only here to prove himself the champion. It took 13 rounds of hands-only mortal combat for Larry to prove himself the champion again. As Larry switches tactics, leaving his jab behind to lead with his right hand, the punches flow through Jerry's defense. Cooney's cornerman enters the ring, waving the white flag. Thank you oh, Jerry's ready to go. There it is. Larry Holmes, the snub champion, had proved himself again. Larry went down as one of the best heavyweights ever to live, almost entirely out of spite. Once the fight was over, the pair became fast friends. No hard feelings to be had without a fight to sell. Always happy to reminisce and smile about the water under the bridge. I'm still the best heavyweight in the world, Larry, and I think you should give me my credit. Even because you don't have no cash, please give me some credit. <laughs>